Hey there, I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergen, an endocrinologist and internist here in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Today we are talking about something that's going to completely change how you think about cholesterol testing. If you have ever gotten a basic lipid panel and been told by your doctor that your cholesterol is fine or, or high or whatever it may be, you need to hear this. The truth is, the basic cholesterol test that your doctor orders it's giving you about as much information as checking the color of your car to determine if the engine works properly. Let me explain why. The problem with basic lipid panel, most doctors order just a basic lipid panel. That's what insurance wants them to order. This gives you your numbers, right? Total cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, HDL cholesterol, triglycerides. Well, it sounds comprehensive and mouthful, right? Wrong. Here's the problem. When we measure LDL cholesterol on a basic panel, we are not actually measuring the LDL cholesterol directly. We are calculating it using a formula. This formula was developed in 1972. That was over 50 years ago. And it has some serious, serious limitations. But even if we were measuring LDL directly, and there is, you can measure LDL directly as well, there's a test for it, but we would still be missing the most important information. You see, saying LDL cholesterol is like saying cars. Well, what kind of cars? Are we talking about smart car or a Mack truck? Because the size and number of these particles makes all the difference, okay? Size and the number. Now, what is LDL particle size and why it matters? Well, let me paint you a picture. Imagine your arteries are like highway and LDL particles are like vehicles carrying the cholesterol. Now, would you rather have 10 large fluffy school buses driving down your highway or 100 small dense motorcycles weaving around in and out in the traffic? The large fluffy LDL particles, we call these pattern A, are like those school buses. They're big, they move slow, and they are much less likely to penetrate the arterial wall that causes that damage that leads to heart attacks and strokes. And these particles are actually relatively benign. Now, small and dense LDL particles, we call it pattern B, are like those motorcycles. Nothing against motorcycles, I'm just saying. They're small, but they move fast. They can easily slip through the spaces in your arterial wall, and once they get in there, they become oxidized and trigger inflammation, leading to what we call atherosclerosis and plaque formation in your arteries. That clogs your arteries, right? And here's a kicker. You could have Two people with identical LDL cholesterol levels on a basic panel, but completely different cardiovascular risk. How? Well, person A might have mostly large fluffy particles, like we said, but person B may have mostly small dense particles, but concentration can be the same, the total concentration. The person B has much higher risk of heart disease based on that differentiation. Now, studies have shown that people with predominantly small dense LDL particles have three to seven times higher risk of heart disease compared to those with large fluffy particles. And that's huge, three to seven times. And yet most doctors never test for this. LDL particle number, the real story is different, right? With that, the size isn't the only thing that matters. The number is also equally important. This is where we call something called ApoB comes in and we can measure LDL particle number directly as well. Now think of it this way. Imagine you are trying to figure out the traffic congestion. Would you rather know the total weight of all the vehicles like LDL cholesterol or would you rather know how many vehicles are actually on the road like LDL particle number? Obviously, you would want to know the number of vehicles. If you have 100 small cars versus 10 large trucks, you might have the same total weight, but very different traffic patterns. ApoB tells us the number of atherogenic particles, that's LDL, VLDL, and other particles that can cause atherosclerosis. Each of these particles has one ApoB protein, so measuring ApoB gives us a direct count of how many potentially harmful particles are floating around in your bloodstream. Now, studies consistently show that ApoB is much better predictor of cardiovascular risk than LDL cholesterol. In fact, some research suggests that ApoB might be the single best lipid marker for predicting heart disease risk. HDL, right? It's not just about the number either. Let's talk about that the so-called good cholesterol. Again, the basic panel just gives you one number, total HDL cholesterol. Just like LDL, this doesn't tell the whole story. 
HDL particles come in different sizes too. We have large HDL particles and small HDL particles, and they have very different functions. Let's explore. Now, large HDL particles are the workhorses. You know, these are the ones that are really good at reverse cholesterol transport, meaning pulling the cholesterol out of the arterial walls and taking it back to the liver for disposal. These are the HDL particles you want, okay? Now, the small HDL particles are less effective in this process. In fact, some small HDL particles might even be pro-inflammatory under certain conditions. Again, you can have two people with the same HDL cholesterol, but one person has mostly large functional HDL particles, while the other person has mostly small, less functional particles, their cardiovascular protection would be very different. There is also something called HDL particle number, measured as APOA1. This tells us how many HDL particles are actually working to protect your arteries. I'm going to give you a real world experience from my practice. I had a patient come in with a basal lipid panel that looked pretty good. His LDL was 120. Most doctors say it's acceptable, no problem. HDL was 45, which is uh, on the lower end, but not terrible, right? So go home, come back in six months, go exercise, whatever they say, right? But when we did advanced testing for this individual, we found that he had predominantly small dense LDL particles and his LDL particle number was through the roof. His ApoB was 140, which puts him at super high risk. Meanwhile, his HDL particles were mostly small and dysfunctional. Now, this guy is walking around thinking his cholesterol was fine based on his basic lipid panel, but he was actually at a very high risk for heart disease. Now, we completely changed his treatment approach based on that advanced testing. And here's something interesting too. Your triglyceride levels on a basic panel can actually give you some clues about your LDL particle size even without advanced testing. So if you have high triglycerides and your HDL is low, you are much more likely to have small, dense LDL particles. This pattern of high triglyceride, low HDL, and small, dense LDL is called atherogenic dyslipidemia and it is strongly associated with insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. So if your triglycerides are above 150 milligram per deciliter and your HDL is below 44 men or 54 women, there's a good chance that you have predominantly small dense LDL particles, even if your total LDL cholesterol looks normal. So what tests should you be asking your doctor for? Here are the key ones. LDL particle size and number. This can be measured through NMR spectroscopy or eye in mobility. Uh, your doctor will know about these, hopefully. These tests will tell you whether you have pattern A or pattern B, right? We talked about that earlier. And how many particles you have. ApoB is, again, what gives you the number of atherogenic particles. The optimal levels are typically below 90, with some experts preferring even below 80. Now, ApoA1 reflects HDL particle number. Higher is generally better, with optimal levels over 140 for men and 160 for women. Lipoprotein little a. This is a genetic variant of LDL that is highly atherogenic. About 20% of the population has elevated lipoprotein little a, and it significantly increases the cardiovascular risk. I would get that checked too. Oxidized LDL. This measures how much of your LDL has been damaged by oxidation, making it more likely to cause arterial damage. The good news is that the LDL particle size and number can be influenced by lifestyle factors. Diet plays a huge role. Refined carbohydrates, sugar, tend to promote small, dense LDL particles. So when you eat a lot of processed carbs, your liver cranks out the LDL particles, which get converted to small, dense LDL. A lower carbohydrate diet, especially one that eliminates processed foods and added sugars, tends to shift LDL particles towards the large fluffy type. Healthy fats, like found in olive oil, avocados, and nuts, can also promote that large LDL particles. Exercise is incredibly powerful for improving particle profiles. Regular aerobic exercise increases your HDL particle number and size, while also helping to shift LDL toward the larger, less atherogenic type.
Weight loss, particularly losing visceral fat, can dramatically improve your particle profile. Visceral fat is metabolically active and promotes the production of these small, dense LDL particles. Omega-3 fatty acids from fatty fish can increase your LDL particle size, can improve your HDL function as well. Here is something really important. Insulin resistance is one of the main drivers of atherogenic dyslipidemia. When your cells become resistant to insulin, it triggers a cascade of metabolic changes that promote small, dense LDL particles. Insulin resistance causes your liver to overproduce VLDL particles. These VLDL particles are triglyceride rich, and as they circulate, they exchange triglycerides with LDL and HDL particles. This makes LDL particles smaller and denser, and HDL particles smaller and less functional. This is why addressing insulin resistance is so crucial for improving your lipid profile. It is not just about the numbers on your cholesterol test. It is about the underlying metabolic dysfunction that is driving the cardiovascular risk for you. You might be wondering why your doctor does not automatically order these advanced testing, right? There are, there are a couple of reasons. I'll say that number one is cost and the insurance. Advanced lipid testing is more expensive than basic panels, and your insurance doesn't always cover it, and they don't like it. They send letters to your doctors. What are you doing? Don't order the expensive test. We are paying for this, right? Lack of awareness. Many doctors simply are not familiar with advanced lipid testing either. Well, or they don't understand its clinical significance because they're not trained on it. And treatment guidelines, you know, most medical guidelines still focus on LDL cholesterol levels rather than particle characteristics, which is basically trying to treat the whole public instead of individual person. And the time constraints, right? It takes more time to explain the advanced testing and interpret the results and all that. And insurance doesn't pay for the doctor's time. They just pay for whatever, you know, just order a test and whatever, do something for it. And here's the thing. If you're serious about understanding your cardiovascular risk, I would say these tests are absolutely worth pursuing, even if you have to pay out of pocket. Let me give you an example from my practice. I had a patient who had a basic panel showed LDL of 160. Most doctors would immediately put this person on statin. Your cholesterol is too high, you're going on statin. But when we did advanced testing, we found that she had predominantly large fluffy LDL particles and low LDL particle number, excellent HDL function, APOB was only 85, quite good. So instead of starting a statin, we focused on lifestyle interventions to address her slightly elevated triglycerides and optimize her metabolic health. Six months later, her lipid profile had improved dramatically without a single medication. Now on the flip side, I have had patients with normal LDL cholesterol who turn out to have a very high particle number, like we mentioned earlier, and predominantly small dense particles. So these patients need much more aggressive intervention. So the bottom line is that the basic lipid panel that most doctors order, giving you incomplete and potentially misleading information about your risk, it's like trying to understand a movie by just looking at just a single frame. LDL particle size and number matter way much more than your total LDL cholesterol. Small dense LDL particles are the real villains, while the large fluffy particles are relatively benign. HDL function and particle characteristics are just as important as your HDL levels too. And remember, testing is important, but these markers can be improved through lifestyle intervention. So diet low in processed carbs, regular exercise, weight management, stress reduction can all help shift these particles toward a more favorable profile for you. I mean, your cardiovascular risk is too important to base decisions based on incomplete information. So don't let that basic cholesterol test gives you false reassurance or unnecessary anxiety. Get the full picture and work with a knowledgeable healthcare provider who can optimize your metabolic health. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you found this information helpful, let me know in the comments. And remember, knowledge is power when it comes to your health. Until next time, please take care and be well.